So I thought I'd make a build video of my remote controlled powered glider that I've been building this summer. Um, here are some of the plans that I did early on. Uh, if you want to look in detail just pause the video. There's nothing particularly detailed in there. They were just um, some rough sketches and ideas um, for various bits and bobs. You can see the fuselage design placement of the components uh, in the sketch that you see there um, is fairly rough, things have changed since since that drawing but you get a rough idea of uh, what I was thinking before I set off with the build as for actuation um, pretty standard really just push rods and linkage here you can see the design for the motor mount that I made, which you'll see later on in the build. Right, so this was the first stage, it was cutting the wing out of this foam sheet, um, which I've got. And because I don't possess uh, a hot wire cutter, uh, I had to cut it by hand. Uh, you can see I've just taken one slice out of the side to form the trailing edge there. So all I did was run it with the coping saw um, very slowly along the edge at an angle like that to um, to get a nice nice-ish cut. You can see it's fairly clean, but um, having sanded it down, there are still some pits in the foam there, um, which I will, I'm going to have to fill in or cover. Um, they're just imperfections, I think. So the next stage, having you can see the, a lower surface there is the top surface of my aerofoil. I've sanded it down nicely and I've just cut a groove for my strengthening spar, which is just a piece of dowel. Um, you can see, yeah, it's quite flexible, so I decided to, um, to put that spar in there to give it a bit of stiffness when it's in the air. Um, so all I did was took a Stanley knife and ran it down it's in a V shape like that to form a groove and then you can see uh, I also used a bit of sandpaper to, um, to run along it to make it a bit smoother so that that spar will fit nice and snugly in there and I'll hot glue that in place you can see it's pretty flush Right, so having the spar is now cut to, to length, it's not glued in yet, but I've just cut the wing, um, cut the ends off and put some dowels in as you can see to form my little mini winglets, which are just slightly upturned at the end, uh, and I've sanded off the corner as well just to make it a bit nicer and a bit more aerodynamic. So I, again, I just cut that angle off with a coping saw and I'll hot glue them together. So this is having glued my spar in place and I've also put some trailing edge um, support on the back in the form of just some folded over card. Um, you can see I've done it on the ailerons as well just because after using that coping saw it was getting a bit fragile. So I've just cut out the holes for the servos. Um, I just did that literally with a Stanley knife and they fit nice and snug in there obviously one for each aileron and they're connected by this linkage system in the middle right I'm halfway through covering the wing now um, using this standard blue packing tape which I actually got off eBay for about two quid uh, and I'm literally just taping it round I only need one layer really just to keep it as light as possible but I'm just keeping that tape tight Okay, so this is the finished taped up wing. So you can see that uh, it's looking pretty nice. Haven't got any holes in there or anything. Um, winglets are glued on um, and it's all nicely, nicely covered. I haven't taped my ailerons on yet. 
Um, and I've also run this over with a, a hot hair dryer um, to kind of, it actually shrinks the packing tape and forms a nicer seal that smooths out some of the wrinkles. Uh, on the on the underside here you can see where I've punched a hole in the tape to get through to my servo recesses. And the next step is to of course take the ailerons in place. So I'm now um I've just finished my motor mount. I've been working on this for a for a day or so. Um it just consists of a little plywood disc there. I've sanded into shape with some holes in it um, and I've got foam surrounding obviously which will form the nose so I've got two um, M2.5 millimeter little bolts there which are pretty short they're only a few millimeters long they just go into the, the front of the motor and I've done this so that I can remove the motor through the fuselage should I need to change it or access it Here's my empennage design then. Um, it's taken me a little while to cut it and then sand it down to this nice aerofoil shape. I'm pretty pleased with it. Uh, I've gone for the T-tail because I love a T-tail. And they look they look uh, nicer in my opinion. So I've literally just put a dowel connection in there to give it some rigidity when I hot glue it together. Having covered the tail as you can see um, glued it together and it's looking pretty nice, it wasn't too difficult to do, there are a few difficult corners but overall it's fairly straightforward. So here's the uh, start of my fuselage design um, construction, it's, you can see it's made out of three layers of this, um, this foam. Um, so you can see I put a strengthening spar there for the tail just because it gets pretty thin and I don't want it to be bending too much. There's my elevator servo in a little recess in the middle layer and as you can see right on the bottom there is my receiver hole. So when they're stacked up you can see I've cut a little hole in there and that's for my wires to go down to my receiver for my servos and also one coming from the speed controller as well. So now I've um, been shaping it together you can see I've glued the bottom two layers together and I've started cutting the nose to shape and sanding it down and I've also, you can see I fitted the folding propeller right so that's my fuselage completed nearly um, shape wise anyway I've been sanding it down and you can see what it looks like with the wings on now <laughs> so I've made a little canopy there to get to uh, the battery etc um, I haven't actually glued on that top layer yet also you can see here I've put in aileron servos uh, and they're linked together by that connector which you saw earlier. I've literally just done a layer of tape so that I can actually access them if I need to. And it's looking pretty smooth. So here you can see um, my recess for the elevator servo again and a little groove where the wires are going to run through. So I've had to make a little access panel in the top there to get to my elevator servo once it's all glued on. I need to be able to access it, so I've just cut a hole there. So strapping it together yet, you can see I haven't actually coated the, the fuselage yet, but it's it's nearly ready. Um, I've also, yeah, you can see there the um, propeller fits nicely into the fuselage folding propeller that I got off the internet so yeah and you can see I've I've opted for the elastic bands as well on the wings there uh, you can see my um, elevator linkage system which I've devised is literally a control rod which which is just piano wire and it passes through to drinking straw sections which are hot glued on it then gets bent up, I hope you can see that, into some dog leg shape and then linked straight onto the control surface via the usual linkage. Here's the elevator access, servo access hole then. 
so I can get through get through into that to adjust it should I need to. I've made a little groove there for the uh, control the wire going to the servos and you can see there's a there's a bit of movement but the elastic band should be tight enough it also gives me flexibility should I need to move the wing so here's the covered fuselage then I'm pretty pleased with it, it's looking pretty nice uh, it's taken me a little while especially bit, bits around the tail where it's a few complicated shapes and also the nose I've covered the um, the access panel my canopy in a in just black electrical tape which I think looks quite nice so you can see there's my speed controller and the wire going down there to my uh, receiver and the motor is nicely tucked in there the battery will sit further back turning it over then um, you can see my nose where the propellers will fold back to and I've made this thing out of milk bottle carton just coated it with that blue tape which is to um, to access my receiver should I need to and I've literally just put a screw into a little bit of dowel rod which I've embedded in the foam and you can see that folds back nicely um, and it's a 2.4 gigahertz receiver Blitz RC works, it's one I had a while ago, it's six channel but I'm only actually using three of them and if I turn it over you can see which channels I'm using, I'm using the aileron channel on the bottom the elevator and the throttle um, I'm not, I haven't got a rudder on this as you'll have noticed because I don't think it's really necessary, it just adds a bit of complexity right so there's the, the finished thing and that's with the wings nicely strapped on it looks pretty nice right so here's the finished glider just show you now it's all connected up uh, how all the uh, control surfaces are linked and work and bits and bobs like that so first of all I'll just show you my transmitter um, it's a 4 channel 2.4 gigahertz thing I got from Blitz RC Works from my last uh, model which I'm reusing most of the radio stuff on this so I'll turn that on and then connect the battery in here I'll just show you uh, I don't know what it's beeping about anyway the battery as you can see is tucked nicely in there uh, connected up to my speed controller and then my motor is obviously in here uh, and that should all nicely fit in there under my canopy you can see uh, in my latest edition here this strip of it's just cardboard coated in the packing tape uh, just to protect this leading edge because it's just foam the rubber bands are actually pulling into it so I've covered that now um, it's a little bit crude as you can see but uh, it does the job right um, so we'll do the ailerons first they're obviously linked to that um, right, we'll do have a look at the elevators now. Now these were, were causing me quite a lot of problems, but I think I found a solution now. So uh, you can see we get a nice deflection, both positive and negative. Uh, and I'll just show you how that links up. So you can see the uh, the control rod running along the tail there, and if I flip this over. Uh, you can see what I've done. So here, are, these are just some drinking straws that I've taped into place. Here's my control wire, which is just piano wire. Bent that into a kind of dog leg shape. And as for the connection, I wonder if you'll be able to see this. Um, I've actually made this flexible connection from a bit of um, insulating sort of plastic off a uh, 
It's actually off one of my old speed controllers, the, uh, the thick wires that go off to the motor from a speed controller. I've just stripped that off and plugged it over here so you can see it's flexible on them. You can see it flexing there, especially in that motion. Uh, but although it's flexible, it's going to hold, I think it's going to hold strong enough. I mean, you can see that without any input, there is a bit of um, movement there. I hope that will be okay. Uh, if not, um, well, it will crash, probably. But, um, yeah, all I've done is embedded this little piece of wire, which actually runs along in there and then goes up here, and I've just joined it. And this, uh, this linkage means it is, there is flexibility, I can pull this out and adjust it as necessary. But it does, there is a, enough friction there to hold it in place, that's not going to go anywhere when it's in the air. And I hope that will give me enough control. So there we are, ailerons, and then I'll just show you the propeller as well. Uh, now the battery I'm using at the moment is actually dying slowly, so I'm not sure how much power we'll actually get from it. But you can see they fold nicely in to the nose there, and I'll be careful not to hit myself here. You can see that wasn't up to full power, but. Uh, I think and I hope that's going to be uh, enough power to pull this thing through the air and get it up to a, a nice gliding height. If not, um, well, I'll have to replace the motor. But because I've uh, because of my motor mount in here, um, that I can actually unscrew the motor and pull it out back through the canopy here, uh, adds a little bit of flexibility should I need to change it. Right, so that's it. Um, I hope to get a first flight video up within the next few weeks. Um, it all depends on the weather and whether my battery arrives um, from America in time because my old one is is dying. Um, but I hope to get that first flight video up as soon as possible. Even if it crashes, I'll still put it up on here um, with any other updates from the design that I have to make, etc. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching this video, guys. Uh, please subscribe if you liked it uh, and if you've got any questions leave them in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible.